Our presentation is about sexual assault on college campus. My name is Jessica Olmstead Allen. My name is Sahir Jawani. My name is Peyton Larkin. My name is Alejandro Loya. And my name is Corinne Shady. What is sexual assault? Sexual assault is any type of contact and or behavior that occurs without the consent of the individual that is being assaulted. Sexual assault includes forced sexual intercourse, forcible sodomy, child molestation, incest, funding, and attempted rape. Most sexual assault goes unreported because the victim is targeted as an offender, which makes the victim stay silent about the sexual assault action. Why is it important? College women are three times more likely to be sexually assaulted than all women. 20% of female students ages 18 to 24 report those assaults, which means 80% those unreported. 11.2% of all students experience rape or sexual assault through physical force, violence, or incapacitation. 23.1% females and 5.4% male undergraduates experience rape or sexual assault. Rape and comprehensive sex education. Comprehensive sex education has been shown to be effective in changing attitudes towards rape and increasing rape knowledge. Countries with a comprehensive sexual education system have been proven to have lower teen birth rates um, from 15 to 19 year old people of age, um, lower abortion rates, and fewer cases of HIV AIDS. Components of a comprehensive sex education include anatomy and physiology, identity, contraceptive use, puberty and development, pregnancy and reproduction, sexually transmitted viruses, healthy and healthy relationships, and safety. In the United States, um, compared to the Netherlands, the United States has less than half of the U.S. schools required to teach sexual education, while the Netherlands has a very comprehensive sexual education, beginning as early as age four. There are much higher instances of rape in the United States at 274.04 in 2010, compared to 92.08 in the Netherlands. The United States also has much higher rates of teen birth, abortion rates, and um, people among the population living with HIV and or so as we saw before, college women ages 18 to 24 are three times more likely to experience sexual assault than all women, and the reasons for this include date and acquaintance rape, alcohol, and Greek life organizations. When it comes to alcohol, there are 97,000 rape students ages 18 to 24, and there are higher binge drinking rates among college students. Reasons for this include unstructured time, the availability of alcohol, inconsistent enforcement of underage drinking laws, as well as limited interactions with parents and other adults. Additionally, Greek life membership is a risk factor for sexual assault. Fraternity members are responsible for 20% of sexual assaults in which the victim is incapacitated, and fraternity men are three times more likely to commit a sexual assault. Fraternity and sorority culture is also encouraging alcohol use, which is a risk factor for rape and sexual assault. And lastly, date and acquaintance rape complicate sexual assault and reporting. In three out of four cases of sexual assault, the perpetrator is someone known to the victim. And on college campuses, this could be a person in your friend group, in organizations, in classes with the victim, or someone well known and liked at the university, making it much harder to report sexual assault and not have retaliation such as victim shaming. And we also know that alcohol is the number one drug used in acquaintance and date rapes which makes the statistic even more complicated. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about handling sexual violence after it has occurred. In 2014, 91% of colleges reported zero incidents of rape, which shows the inadequacy of, of rape being reported. Um, reported sexual assault cases have more than doubled in the past three years at A&M University. Um, this is because since that statistic, A&M has been speaking out and informing students, especially at orientation and emails at the beginning of the semester about reporting rape. Also, statewide, A&M has the, a lower incidence report of rape than any other college. I'm gonna talk about Title IX a little bit. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex, so that means sexual assault, sexual harassment, and rape. Um, you can file a Title IX complaint. There's a, there's a, a website here, studentlife.tamu.edu slash sas.svp that has more information that you can go to. Um, anyone can file a complaint if you are a victim, a witness, or a third party, you can file a complaint for who 
whoever needs it. Also, another suggestion is to report the rape or sexual assault to the university and local police. All right, so what can be done? So I'm gonna talk about prevention that is being done on college campuses. So one program that Texas A&M University has is the Step In and Stand Up program. So Step In and Stand Up um, Against Sexual Violence is a program at Texas A&M. It's a campaign where Aggies sign a pledge um, to always step in and stand up uh, against sexual assault and violence. So the main purpose of this program is to show our fellow Aggies that we support them and we will always stand beside them. Um, and another main purpose is to bring awareness not only to campus but also into the community. And it is to change the perception, conversation, and culture that people have on sexual assault and violence. Another resource that we have at Texas A&M University is the Student Assistant Services Office. The Student uh, Assistant Services Office provides resources to students on how to personally deal um, with sexual assault, so if they are a victim themselves, as well as to give support to their fellows um, or if they have ever witnessed sexual assault or sexual uh, violence that is occurring. Because often what happens is that your friend would be a victim, but they're too scared to report it. But if you're a witness and you don't, you don't know what to do, you can go to the office and they'll provide you with resources. Um, other places that you can also go is student health services, student counseling, and sexual assault resource center. So Sexual Assault Awareness Month it happens in April. It started in the late 1990s. The main purpose of this month is to gain awareness on sexual assault and sexual violence, as well as educate on how to prevent it from happening. So on April 1st, 2001, the U.S. observed its very first SAM uh, nationally. So SAM is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Uh, the website provides many tools and resources on how to prevent and educate sexual violence and explains how to start your own campaign. Specifically, there are many resources on the website on how to prevent sexual violence on college campuses. So it asks us questions like, what exactly is sexuality and consent? Um, as well as, what is camp campus sexual violence? Because not everyone knows what it exactly means. As well as, there are many action tape, uh, steps that healthcare professionals, faculty, and staff can um, refer to. Lastly, we wanted to share the results from our own research on sexual assault in college students. So in our survey of 26 participants, our research was evenly split among class years, although it had far more female participants than male participants. Most students in the survey said they felt safe on campus, with 42.3% of respondents saying they rarely felt unsafe, and only 7.7% of respondents saying they often felt unsafe. Of the respondents, 73.1% had personally or had known someone who had been sexually assaulted. Respondents were also about evenly split between drinking rarely, only during special occasions, or sometimes, with no participants saying that they drunk frequently, meaning that they were at a decreased risk for sexual assault themselves. When asked how often they thought sexual assault occurs on college campuses, participants replied with the following results. About one third of students said that sexual assault occurred rarely, with another third saying that it occurred sometimes. A small portion said that sexual violence never occurred on college campuses, and a little over a quarter of participants said that sexual assault occurred often. Despite most participants recognizing that sexual assault does occur on college campuses, Almost three quarters of respondents said that efforts to decrease rape at AM were only somewhat effective, with three respondents saying that efforts were effective and no respondents at all saying that efforts were extremely effective.